you so much for tuning into our YouTube channel today. The Experienced Church Man, the perfect place for imperfect people. I don't know where you are in your day. I don't know how it's been going, but I believe today by just watching this that God is going to change your life. And let me encourage you with one more thing before we jump into the message. Man, watching online is amazing, but being here, there's nothing like it. So can I encourage you that we want to see you next Sunday here at the Experience Church in person. We love you and we hope that this message blesses you today. Good to see all of you again. You look great from here up. It's amazing. You look great. You've never been better. Never looked better. Man, it's good to be back. It's good to be just back home. It just feels good. It's like riding a bike, you know? It just feels good. And, uh, you know, Pastor Tim uh, talks about how it went from business relationship to friendship to becoming part of family. And I can show you on my phone. I won't I because won't, you won't be able to see it. But I could show you um, a text to my wife last night when I got in. I flew in. I drove up and stayed in Wheeling last night and drove, up, drove here this morning. When I got to my hotel last night, I said, you know, there's not many places on the weekend I would rather be than home. But if I have to be away, I want to be here. And I love this place. And it's true what Pastor Tim said. Pastor Tim, Pastor Linda, we have become great friends. And I don't look at this as a consultant to partner relationship. This is a friend to friend, family to family. And the opportunity that I have to stand up on this platform, I don't take it lightly. Uh, this, is, this is a responsibility that Pastor Tim and Pastor Linda have given me, and I, I take that responsibility with great humility. And so this morning, as we have a conversation, can we do that? Can we just have a little bit of a conversation? You here, you online, welcome, good to see you. I'm with, I'm with Pastor Tim. Come on. When you're comfortable, get back in here, okay? We understand, no condemnation, but there are there are seats. I see seats available for people. So come on back. We'd love to have you. But I want to talk this morning about a very simple principle. It's just three words, okay? And it says this, God honors movement. How many of you need a reset right now? Like, it's okay to raise your hand. People aren't going to judge you because I'm raising my hand. The last year has not been terribly fun. Would you agree? Hasn't been a whole lot of high moments. There have been some, right? But hasn't been a, a lot of them. So we need a reset. How many of you have been, Im and it's okay to raise your hand on this too, how many of you have been impacted financially during the global pandemic? Okay, I'm raising my hand, okay? So just in the interest of transparency, I'm family, right? Okay. So from the time the pandemic started to today, I've taken a 48% pay cut in my job. 48%. But listen, I'm more fired up today than I've ever been fired up about the future. And if you're sitting here today saying, you know what, it's all over. I've taken this pay cut or I lost my job or I, you know, I'm not sure what's, what's, what's next. God honors movement. Take a next step. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to start and I'm just going to read through some scriptures. And, and yes, we're going to talk about money today, and Pastor Tim and I are going to talk a little bit about building hope later, but what I'm going to talk about this morning is not specifically building hope. It's you. And what is your next step? A next step for everybody looks different. A next step for Chad and Tammy is going to be different than a next step for Pastor Tim and Pastor Linda. But we all have a next step to take. For some of you, it could be a first step. So we're going to talk about that today. So I'm going to dive in so that I honor your time and, and we can get out of here and beat whomever else to the restaurant. Um, that was a joke. It was a joke. So I'm here all day. It doesn't get any better. Okay. It may get worse. Okay. So I'm just going to run through some scriptures. They're not going to be on the screen. I want you just to focus up here and listen. If you want to take some notes, that's fine. But we start in Hebrews 13, 5. If I were to say this, I will never leave you or forsake you. How many of you have heard that passage out of scripture. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We use that in a multiplicity of contexts. I will never leave you or forsake you. We're, we're going through a rough time. We hit a rough spot or we're facing something difficult or whatever it might be. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's true. He won't. But I bet you many of you didn't understand or recognize that that passage 
was specifically relating to finances. And here's what the whole verse says, because that's just the last quarter of the verse. It says this, Hebrews 13, verse 5, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now listen, listen, it doesn't say keep your life free from money. If there are people out there saying money is the root of all evil, that is a lie from the pit of hell. The love of money, okay? Keep yourself from the love of money. Like my wife and, and kids, they really like a roof over their head. They do. Like when it's rainy, they don't have to feel that when they're inside, right? They really like three meals a day. They like food, some more than others, okay? But they like food. That takes money. Do you know all of this in here, these lights, these LEDs, which look killer, by the way, um, the, the sound, the staff, all of the things that it takes for TE Church to, to put out the product that it does, guess what? That doesn't happen for free, just so you know, okay? So again, money is not the root of all evil, but f- loving it is. Philippians 4.19, I love this. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Every, not some, not a few, every, every. Luke 6.38, give, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be put into your lap. I love that. Pressed down, shaken together, and it will still run over because we serve a more than enough God, right? Right? He wants more than enough for you. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And then I love this one. Most people don't, but I do. Malachi 3.10. We're going to go back into the Old Testament a little bit and understand the Old Testament is still relevant in 2021. Okay? Like, we're not unhitching our wagon from the Old Testament. Because Jesus came to fulfill the law, not abolish the law. So this, what is said in the Old Testament is still relevant for us today. In Malachi 3, verse 10, it says this, bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Who gets fired up about that? There you go. Come on. Okay? Bring the whole tithe. Oh, here he goes. He's going to step on toes, read my mail, and now it's going to get awkward. I hope it does. Because this isn't me talking. Okay? Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test. God is saying, test me in this. It's one of the very few moments in Scripture where God explicitly says to his people, come on, test me. See if I won't keep my promise. Test me. And then it says this, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I love some translations say a blessing that you can't contain. How many of you want that? You want a blessing you can't contain. I hope, I mean, listen, this is audience participation, okay? If I ask you a question, the answer is usually yes or Jesus. If I ask you to raise your hand, it's okay to raise your hand, okay? I'm the only one looking at you. Okay, so how many of you want a blessing? There are still people that did not raise their hand. That is unbelievable. Thank you for your honesty, okay? You want a blessing? Bring the whole tithe. That's a tenth. That's 10% of the first, that's the first fruits. 10% of what you make, of your gross. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, he said it. Yeah, but I want to I want to give on my net cuz it's not as much and you know it, it just is easier. That's awesome. You can be blessed on your net. I'm going to be blessed on my gross. Okay? And then for those of you that might say or those out there that might say, you know, but Chad, it is the New Testament and I'm a grace giver. So I'm going to give really whatever the Lord has laid on my heart. Listen, if you're a grace giver, I am more fired up than Malachi 3:10. You know why? Because grace gave everything. So you should give everything. So, 
download the app and give everything, <laughs> right? You can do that today before you leave. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. How many of us have heard it said, man, back when we used to fill out check ledgers and, and our little, I don't even know what they're called anymore because I haven't used one in so long. When you balanced your checkbook, okay, millennials, it's okay. You don't know what I'm talking about, okay? But you used to be able to look at your checkbook and you could really tell where your heart was because that's where your treasure was. And it was oftentimes at like Cheddar's or Chipotle or, you know, Nordstrom or, you know, that's where your heart was because that's where your treasure is. Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Catch that. Don't lose that. For his children's children. It skips a generation. Why? Because God knew that it would be a generational sin, the way people treat finances. It would be the number one battle between God and the heart is money. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous. And then we're going to let this verse guide the rest of our conversation today. Proverbs 21.5. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. Pastor Tim just said it. You want to keep getting what you're getting, keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to experience profit, not what I'm saying, what the scripture says, you need to put together a diligent plan and then execute it. So I want to talk to you this morning about a plan, okay? A lot of times when we're coming out of the midst of something that's difficult, we need a reset. We need somebody to give us a plan. Man, give me step by steps. Give me some rungs of a ladder, right? Let me know what, what step one needs to be, okay? Because it's easy for me to get from the ground to step one, but if I tried to get from the ground to rung four or five in one step, that's hard. So we're going we're gonna to talk about a nine-rung ladder this morning, okay? And this is specifically as it relates to finances for now. I'll tie this all back together. But we would say, you know, Dave Ramsey has his baby steps. We have our ladder, Okay? Ours is nine rungs, his is six or seven. Ours is better, okay? I'm just kidding. We love Dave Ramsey. Rung number one, okay? Rung number one. So several years ago, three years ago to be exact, I made a goal, and it's written on the notes in my phone, that I would like for my 25th wedding anniversary to pay cash for a cruise for me and my wife to the Greek Isles. We've always wanted to do that. So last Tuesday, while we were sitting in line waiting to pick up our seven-year-old, I'll talk more about her later, we paid cash for a Greek Isles cruise in 2022. <laughs> Listen, that's not because of anything I did. Believe me, remember I took a 48% pay cut? Okay? Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Last time I was here, I shared with you that for several years, being a pastor, I didn't tithe. Shame on me. I was asking the people to do what I wasn't willing or doing myself. That's terrible. But Tammy and I made a decision many years ago to tithe. God got a hold of our hearts, and we started to tithe, and we haven't looked back. We do more than the tithe now because of what God has provided. And I remember I told you I took a 48% pay cut. Okay, Chad, we get it. No, no, no. You gotta understand that. How many of you have ever married off a daughter in this room? How many of you have ever married off a daughter for free in this room? How many of you spent more than you wanted to or should have spent on marrying off your daughter in this room? Can I get a witness? There's a support group right out here after the service for people who have married off daughters. But here's what I'm fired up about. Her wedding didn't follow me home in the form of a month, minimum monthly payment. So go ahead and put the picture up. Get fired up. That's Sierra. She's 23. He's an idiot. He's 23 too. I'm just kidding. I like him. He's a good guy. But it's never good enough. Right, Pastor Tim? No, nah, I'm just kidding. No, he's awesome. But... We got to do this. It's probably one of the greatest memories of my life that I'll never forget. And because of 
our obedience, God said, you know what, I'm going to bless. And he did. And we paid cash. Praise the Lord. But it doesn't happen apart from rung number one. Rung number one, if you have not done this, don't start anywhere else on the ladder. Start on rung one and simply set goals. Set goals. Like, what, are, what goals do you have? They don't have to be spiritual goals. I told you I wanted to take my wife on a cruise to the Greek Isles. That is not spiritual. Now, the experience might be, but there is nothing spiritual about that. Maybe you want to give like you've never given. Maybe you want to pay for the entire building. You receive that, don't you, Pastor? That's awesome. But seriously, you can't go to rung two until you've completed rung one, which is to set goals. So if your next step, you're saying, man, we might be on rung four, but we've never set goals. We don't really know what we're aiming for. Because if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. If you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Set goals. For some, it's going to be baby steps. For others, it's going to be giant steps. It doesn't matter the size of the goal. What matters is that you set them. Set goals is rung number one, okay? Rung number two, we give, right? Rung number two, we save. What do we save? $1,000? No, we save a minimum of one month expenses. Why? Because your air conditioner costs more than $1,000. And then when your furnace gets jealous and goes out, it costs more than $1,000. And then your transmission goes out and it costs more than $1,000. So we say one month of expenses. I don't know what that is for you, but once you set goals, then you save. You build your wall. Don't come down off that wall. Just like Nehemiah, he was ridiculed and made fun of, but he built the wall because he knew that the wall was part of his calling. Build the wall of margin in your life. Okay, and then step number three, what do you think step number three is? So we're giving, we set goals, we save, then what? Somebody said debt, okay? Close, but not quite. We invest. Step rung number three, we invest. And what do we invest? We invest enough to capture our full company match or $100 a month, whichever is greater. So my employer gives me, if I invest 3% of my income, he gives me 3% for free. Like he just gives me 3%. Like he matches my investment 100%. Why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I do that? But you may say, well, I can't do that. I can't even do $100. What did I say earlier? God honors movement. Do something. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 25 bucks. Start now. Do something. Because God honors movement. God's not going to make the move for you, but he's going to clear the path in such a way for you to take the step and make the move. And then rung number four, whoever said it, is to eliminate all non-house, non-business debt. So your credit cards, your car payment, your boat payment, your ATV payment, your fishing rod payment, your furniture payment, your TV payment. Yes, people actually finance those things. Your llama payment. We actually had somebody call in and say, hey, how do we pay off a llama? One bite at a time. I'm sorry, I didn't. That's terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible. But this is the rung oftentimes people spend the most time on. But if you complete this wrong, on average, the person who completes this wrong pays off between $1,200 to $1,500 a month of expenses. It will be the largest raise you've ever received potentially in your life. I dare you tomorrow when you go to work to ask your boss for a $1,200 to $1,500 a month raise. Don't do that, okay? It'll be no quickly followed by your final paycheck will be sent to you on such and such a day. But if you want to give yourself that, it usually takes anywhere from a year to 15, maybe 18 months at the most. If you're diligent, remember, the plans of the diligent lead to profit to pay that off. And then we can go to rung five because now you've freed up a whole bunch of money. And don't go spend it again. Okay, we're going to continue building that wall. Rung number five is to build your savings to a minimum of three months of expenses. Three months of expenses. Okay, so you've already got one. Now you've paid off all your debt. 
you're investing, and now you save three months. Now your wall's getting big. Now you can start having some, doing some fun stuff, making some great decisions. You can give more, right? Then once you complete rung number five, it goes to rung number six. Place 15% of your gross income into tax advantage investments. I don't know what that means for you. I know what it means for Tammy and me. But approach a financial planner or advisor and say, hey, what are the best tax advantage investments for me? And remember, gross. Okay? Not your net, your gross. It's 15%. Okay? Then rung number seven. This is where Tammy and I are right now is to pay off all house and business debt. We don't own a business, but we do a house. And so right now, if our plan, if it, things go as planned, in seven years, our house will be paid off. I think I could handle, at 53, having a paid off house. There are people in this room that have experienced paid off houses for a long time, and they are fired up about it. It's a great feeling. And on average... Once you've paid off all of your other debt, you can pay off your house in about seven to 10 years. Again, the plans of the diligent. You gotta have a plan. You gotta be diligent to complete the plan. That leads to profit. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna keep getting what you're getting. So what is your next step? Take a step. God honors the movement. I remember sitting in the, the conference room up here when I, my first meeting. You guys were scared to death. Man, is what we're doing what God wants us to do? We know this valley needs something like this so badly. But are we the ones that are going to do this? Is this too big for us? What did you do? You took a step. Look what God has done, guys. I didn't do it. They didn't do it. Y'all didn't do it. God did it. And he continues to do it. We had no idea who would buy this building. Who ended up purchasing this facility are not the people who we, we first thought would. But guess what? We were faithful in movement. Are there other stories of movement that God honored in Scripture? Absolutely. Abraham and his son Isaac. Right? God called Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac to show that he was obedient. Abraham was here, and God brought a ram to the thicket to distract Abraham. And because of Abraham's willingness to move... And to take that step of faith, God said, I will bless you and make you father of many nations. Joshua, leading the children of Israel to the promised land. They got to the Jordan River, and it wasn't at trickle stage. It wasn't at creek stage. It was at flood stage. I've been to the Jordan River. It's not a huge river down in the bottom, but if it were at flood stage, seeing the, the expanse at the top, man, that'd be, that'd be intimidating. But what did God challenge them to do, Joshua and the priests? Just... Just put your foot, just put your toe in the water. Take a step. God honors movement. And then rung eight, place 30% of gross income into tax advantage investments. So if you're placing 30% of your gross income into tax advantage investments, how much of your income are you living on? Who said that? Raise your hand. Why? Oh, for crying out loud. Cheater. 60 because you're tithing 10%. So it's the 30 plus the 10 leaves a 60. And let me tell you something. If you've paid off your house and you've paid off all your other debt, you can live on 60%. Believe that. And then rung nine is my favorite. Rung nine is to live a fully funded life. Why? So that I can stack cash and buy all the fancy houses and cars that I can and go on all the nice vacations that I want to? Wrong. It's so that you can truly be like Jesus. It's so that you can give as generously as he's given to you. Do you know that Jesus gave you everything? There's no greater example of generosity in Scripture than God the Father when he gave his son Jesus for you and me. So when we say live a fully funded life, that means live a fully generous life, giving back as much as possible. I told the first service, I said, listen, if I never receive another gift in my life, it'll be too soon. I don't honestly care about another gift, but man, I want to give. I want to be in a position to bless. I want to be in a position to be generous when I'm asked to, or even when I'm not asked to. 
I want to be in a position that my son and I were in at Walmart, standing in line and watching a mother put food back on the counter because she couldn't afford it and say, put it back in your grocery cart. We're going to pay for that. Not because of anything I did, but because of everything he did in fulfilling his promise. Right? Test me in this and see if I will not open up the floodgates. Maybe for you, you're sitting here today and you're like, man, that all sounds great, but I keep hearing you, Pastor Tim and you talk, and, and the team talk about this person called Jesus. Before any of this can happen, you need to experience a relationship with the one who can make this happen. Because let me tell you something, Tammy and I can't do this on our own. You can't do this on your own. But when you place your faith and trust in day. Yeah, that's right. And hey, if you're somebody that's here and you're a singer. Let me tell you something. It's not always easy. But everything seems to fall into alignment. It all begins to make sense. And so then when we take that next step of setting goals, man, it's through the filter, through the lens of a relationship with Jesus. And when we get to the place where we're living a fully funded life, it's through the lens of Jesus so that we become more generous than we've ever been. Why? Because Jesus was the most generous. So you might be sitting here this morning and saying, man, that is my next step to place my faith and trust in God's son, Jesus. Because let me tell you, on March 31st, 1986, I made the best decision of my entire life when I placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I didn't even know it, but that was the step I needed to take. And I didn't know back then on February, whatever it is, 21st, I'd be standing on the stage at TE Church sharing this with you. But isn't it amazing how God works when we take that next step of placing our faith and trust in him, he gives us opportunities to share him with others. And there's nothing more fulfilling than that. So I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Every single person in the room, no one looking around. And I just want you to be thinking in your mind and in your heart, what is my, what is our next step? And if you're sitting here this morning and you've not taken that first step, the most important step, by placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning. And these words that I'm going to ask you to repeat after me in your heart, not out loud, there's nothing magical about these. But it's an opportunity for us to recognize that we need a Savior. And so if you're sitting here this morning and you've not placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ in the quietness of the moment between you and God, I just want you to repeat these words after me in your heart. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And apart from you, I can't experience true forgiveness. This morning, I make the decision to place my faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. I want all things to become new. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Keep your heads bowed, keep your eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer this morning and you took that next step, I just simply, no one's looking around, I just want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Praise the Lord. Eyes closed. Nobody looking around. If you made that decision this morning and you've not put your hand up, put your hand up this morning. Pastor Tim and I are going to have a, a conversation for just a minute. Let's pray. Father, thank you. 
We know that as a result of the decisions that were made this morning, the angels in heaven are rejoicing because you have welcomed a host of new people into your forever family. And God, we're rejoicing this morning. I want to run a lap right now because I'm so fired up because of the way you constantly work on our behalf. God, I pray for this group of people in here this morning, God, that you would challenge them to take that next step, whatever that step is. Maybe it's on the rung of the ladder, maybe it's not. But God, challenge them. Give them the courage and the boldness and the wisdom to take that next step, knowing that you honor movement and you will bless that step as long as, as long as they're following where you're leading. God, we love you. And we're grateful for your love for each one of us. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Woo. I'm Good stuff. Lap. You're ready to run, aren't you? I, and I don't run. I don't know if you can tell that or Although, not. Although, let me tell you, give it up for Chad. From the last time he was here, he has been on. We're talking about reset, getting physically healthy that was the first part how many how much weight have you lost 42 pounds 42 i lost my daughter my <laughs> seven-year-old weighs 42 pounds i lost my daughter well, hopefully That's awesome. you'll find her soon yeah so, exactly hey uh i just want to have a quick real and raw conversation i want to talk to you about just a couple things just your first response we haven't rehearsed this there's no idea what i'm going to talk about i have no idea what i'm going to talk about either but i just want to throw a couple things at you because you're talking about finances and in the Bible we know that it talks about money more than it talks about sin yet for whatever reason and most of you know this the church gets a bad rap when, when we talk about money so so how do we manage that tension do we do we talk about it do we not talk about it how, how do you how do we work yeah. through that so the church is really good at affirming all spiritual gifts, leadership, administration, teaching, preaching. But when it comes to the spiritual gift of giving, we shirk back. We take our foot off the accelerator. Jesus in the New Testament alone spoke about money and possession seven times more than he spoke about love, hope, and prayer combined. I would say this, press in to that topic. Why? Because it's near and dear to the heart of our Savior. Therefore, it should be near and dear to the heart of us. And we should be bold knowing that that is a passion of his. Yes. So therefore, it should be a passion of ours. It is. And I think that the struggle for, for those of us that haven't got to that place in giving, if you're giving, it's, a, it's an easy topic because you do realize that you can't outgive God, that God is good and he's faithful. And But for those of us that are in the room and maybe we get, when we start talking about money, I say people get funny when you talk about money. You just get a little like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know how to process this. I'm not there yet. What would you say to the person that's here that, that like they want to in, in their mind, they're like, I know that I need to do this. It's not that I don't trust God, but I don't know if I trust him with my wallet yet. What would you say to them to be able to, because we're there, we, yeah. we've been, Lindsay and I have been tithing now for 20 years, best decision we've ever made other than following Jesus, giving right. our life to Jesus. Right. But what would you say to them? Yeah, I would say this. If you're not giving anything right now, give something. Just take that step. I'm not, nor is Pastor Tim, nor is, our past, is Pastor Linda expecting people to go from zero to 10% overnight. Like maybe you, you can, you're like, hey, it's going to be a step of obedience for me to give 3%. You know what? Start at 3%. I would encourage you to do something. What did I just talk about? Take seven steps at one time. No. Take your next step. It's one step. And I go back to Malachi 3.10 where God himself says, test me in this. It's like, dare me, right? Test him and see if he will not open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing on you, you can't contain. And it may not always be financial. Last time I was oh, here, right. I said, one of the greatest blessings of our lives, my wife and I, is Ava, our seven-year-old. Now she costs us a lot of money. So that's not like pouring out financial blessing on us. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you right now, when we get to give to Ava and see the look on her face of excitement and satisfaction and gratefulness, I'm telling you, it's worth every penny. It is. And we can't do that 
if we weren't obedient with what God has asked us to test him in and we weren't receiving that blessing back. Amen. It's true, but you have to take the step. What you're saying is you won't see God move until you move. So you have to do something. So that's the hope today. Hey, real quick, let's just talk about this before we wrap it up. Obviously, you're here because of what we're doing as a church, building hope, that we are building a brand new facility. Again, we say it all the time. It's not about bricks and mortar. It's about flesh and blood. This is simply a tool that will allow us to continue to impact our community for the next 100 years. Not only will it be a blessing for us in the room, but your kids and their kids and people that we don't even know. Check this out. I was thinking about this. Do you realize that there are people that we have no idea who they are, what, what their life is about right now, because of our faithfulness, they will walk through the doors of that place and their lives will be forever changed. Man, I don't know about you, but that, that like does something to me, that God would use us. So you, you're, you do this a lot with a lot of different churches. Talk a little bit about what you've seen God do here in Bridgeport, Ohio, right? The thriving metropolis of Bridgeport, Ohio, and just your experience from the outside looking in and how you could encourage us maybe with where we are. Yeah, I will say this, first and foremost, it's, it's amazing. The simple fact that you guys are taking these next steps and God honors movement, right? When I came here almost three years ago for the first time, it was, I mean, we think we're gonna do this. We're, we're stepping out in faith and trusting that God's gonna provide and look what God has done. Look what God has done. If you are not a part of building hope, and he did not ask me to say this, so I'm just going to say this. If you're not a part of building hope, you need to be a part of building hope. Not so that the church can get your money, but so that you can be a part of the blessing to forever change this valley in a way that it's never been changed. And if you're not a part of this, you need to be a part of this. And I'm going to speak to two other groups, okay? There's a group of people in, at TE Church that when we started this, they made a commitment to give over and above their regular giving. And for whatever reason, I'm not here to judge, I'm not here to condemn, but for whatever reason, they haven't given anything on that commitment. Hey, listen, I'm sure there is a reason. Let me challenge you with this. Take a step, do something. You may not fulfill your commitment, but if it was, if it was a commitment that God laid on your heart, you know what, our owner says this, and he probably said it when he was here. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. If it's God's will, it's God's bill. So trust him. And maybe some of you, when COVID hit, you're like, man, we were just plugging along, giving, 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 and er, we put on the brakes. We have the resources, but we just were uncertain. We're a little bit scared. We're a little bit confused about what's going on and what's going to happen in the future. Let me tell you something right now. We don't serve a God of confusion, but we serve a God of order. And if you maybe took a step back, can I just challenge you to take a step back in? and to start giving the way you were giving before. Because listen, the more that's given, the more that's received, the less TE Church has to borrow. Wow. Get fired up about Say not that borrowing. again, that's true. Okay. That's true, and we're gonna do it. We're that church. Now listen, we were talking. If you want to be irrelevant, just keep doing what you've always done. It would be so easy just to stay here, deal with the parking, oh, we've, we've hit our limit, but that's not who God has called this church to be. God has called our church to be that church, to walk in faith, to do things that no one else is willing to do so we can reach people that no one else is reaching and we can change our city forever. So we're gonna do it, Chad, with your help, with the help of God, we're gonna me, make it let happen. Let me just say, yeah. I believe God just put something on my heart to share with people in here and maybe, you know, wherever this goes out on the, on the internet, I'm speaking to me as much as I'm speaking to you. Stop giving into the fear. Stop giving into the fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not. So stop giving into fear. If God is telling you to do something, walk in obedience. Stop letting the government tell you how to live your life. Stop telling your co stop letting your coworker tell you how to live your life. Stop letting that family member tell you how to live your life. But live your life in accordance with the will of God. And stop giving into the Amen. fear. Wow. And take that next step, whatever that is for you. Take that step. Chad, thank you. Give it up one more time for our friend Chad. Thank you, man.
really good.